Connection profiles are used to associate AAA requirements with remote users as they connect into the environment. So when a user connects into the organization, they'll select which connection profile they're going to use. This will typically be based on a group name, such as enterprise or partners. If you're a corporate member, then enterprise. If you come from a partner, you would select partner when you authenticate. We have different AAA portals perhaps in the back end, or perhaps different login requirements for each type of user. See, in this example, our authentication for enterprise uh, agents would require a certificate as well as a radius username or one-time password. When we take a look at using authentication for our partners, we'll just use a username and password. Now, for authorization, again, we're using the same mechanism. We're using radius on the back end, and that's very common for access through a device. For access into a device, remember that's typically TACX+. So looking at connection profiles, this can either be based on a, what they call a connection profile URL. So notice with the AnyConnect client, we're connecting to vpn.company.com forward slash partners. Um, now, when you connect, notice that we've got this login box, and the login box has got our groups here. It says, OK, enterprise or the partner's profile. Additionally, you've got space to enter your username and password. We'll go ahead and hit OK. Once we send our credentials across, it'll hit the ASA. It could check its local user database, uh, or alternatively, punt those credentials to the back end to a AAA server. Now, some of you may be using uh, digital certificates for authentication. So in place of, or in addition to, the username and password, we could have uh, a digital certificate that's used. Now, within the digital certificate, there's uh, a bit of information, right? Whenever I kind of describe digital certificates, I use this box. And I break it up into four quadrants just to show all the important pieces that go into the digital certificate. So first off, a digital certificate is made up of your public key. Then it's made up of identity information. The public key is just perhaps a 2048-bit uh, RSA public key. It doesn't really look like much. It's a bunch of just numbers and gibberish. But when we add this ID to it, it goes, oh, that means you know, vpn.cisco.com. That's a, you know, a valid, fully qualified domain name. And within the ID, we've got different parameters that describe typically kind of like real world things, like a city, a state, a company. Um, and we associate that identity information to that public key. Now, the rest of it is going to be information about the certificate authority itself, who actually generated the certificate, as well as the certificate details. Because the certificate will have things like a born on date, an expiration date, a serial number, a revocation list distribution point, kind of all these logistic details that get thrown in there. Um, what we're going to focus on, as you probably would have guessed, is the identity portion. And within the identity portion, you can look for different things. Uh, for example, OU is organization unit. And a lot of times, that sounds like a department. So if I'm in the training department or education, my OU might be IT underscore training. I'll just put train because I'm running out of space there. <laughs> but you get the idea. The, uh, the way that the firewall can utilize this is it says, hey, when someone presents their digital certificate to you, look at it. And you know what? If it says IT, they get these permissions. And if it says sales, they get different permissions. What are they allowed to access? What time of day do they connect? Uh, what clients are available for them to use? You can understand how we'd want to give different permissions to different users of each of these groups. So before you get into doing things for specific groups, remember that there's a default connection profile. If you don't define any criteria, for mapping remote users to a specific connection prof profile, everybody's just going to fall back to hitting this default. Now, the default web VPN group is used for AnyConnect, SSL, as well as clientless SSL VPN remote access connections. And our connection profiles are fully customizable. Anything from <clears throat> login banners to login times to protocols that can be used we can customize. But again, if we do it at the default level, it's going to apply to everybody.
that's great if that's what you intend, um, but just realize that it's, it's going to be anything that we set here will be passed down uh, to every user. Any of those parameters can be overwritten though on a user by user basis. That would be very specific. Uh, group by group tends to make a little bit more sense. So here we're just showing a comparison of editing a connection profile within Cisco Firepower versus Cisco ASA. Uh, Firepower has got a little bit, maybe a cleaner interface. I feel like the AnyConnect interface uh, or the AS ASDM interface here where we're editing this AnyConnect profile, it feels to me a little bit dated, but it's just, just because I've been using ASDM for uh, so long now, probably well over a decade or so. Um, as mentioned in one of the previous sections, as we look at the, the features, there's not always what we call feature parity, or the exact same features that exist on two different units or two different products. So at the time of this recording, we still tend to see, we tend to see the majority of features available uh, on ASA, and then those features being moved over and added one at a time to Firepower. Of course, on Firepower, we hit the most common uh, things that everybody needs right off the bat, and then as customers complain, you know, they say, oh, we're missing this exception or that exception. We try to make sure it gets added in.